episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes, his name is Bricky, and oh joy, grim dark. But before we get into that, if you enjoyed today's episode, head on over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous and consider maybe supporting us. You get access to the Discord, bloopers if they happen, the $15 tier gets you all the posters in HD and digital format. It's wonderful patreon.com slash adeptus ridiculous bricky things and stuff things and stuff uh we are going to be doing the eisenhorn book club very soon read that please and also if you want to pick up merchandise including the still 50 percent off mats as well as the amazing uh, music of the third trading card game mat it's incredible it's in stock it's available at orchid8.com Com. Shy has news for all of you. That's why we're going really quick right now. Roll it, Shy. Uh, the airwaves in the isolated community of Augury Point, New Mexico, broadcast an enigmatic frequency known as 99.9 FM, or the unidentified signal. This underground radio station captivates listeners with its late night talk show where two hosts discuss stories of the strange and unknown under the silvery moon. They delve into the realm of true crime, man-made and natural disasters, odd sightings, mysterious disappearances, and bizarre conspiracies. Their conversations cover an infinite range of fascinating and thought-provoking subjects. Tune in as day slips into night, and listen as blurry shapes flicker at the edge of your eye. They're listening too. Damn, DK and Shy, that was, as the kids like to say, bussin. No it is, cap poggers. I am I am very excited. I am very excited uh, about it. So, um, you know, it, it's going to be a lot of fun because we, we can't cover everything on Detective Ridiculous, right? It's just like, you know, you kind of have to stick to true crime. We can do a little cryptid stuff, but, like, there's such a wide variety of, like, interesting, weird stories that just need a home. And Slap is great. Uh, everybody remembers him from the Primer episode, so, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm oh, it's with, it's with Slap? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, from the oh, Gar awesome. Primer episode, yeah. I, I was only told it's a new project with me and DK uh, from Shy's perspective, and I did not know Slap was part of it. Awesome! That's great to hear. He was a lovely guest. Yeah, he's been our he's been our friend for a while since way back in the cursed Warframe days. Well, when you guys get famous, I simply ask that you one remember me and two let me do your merch. Oh, brother! Like you think we go to anybody else for merch? Hell yeah. Shy, we're going to other people for merch. For- <laughs> Please don't go to other people for merch. <laughs> go ahead. Let's see if you last 10, 10 days with Teespring. That's, oh boy, that is fair. Uh, hey, I'll I'll make you a deal. We'll, we'll go to you for merch if you, if you don't make me do a quote today. Oh. Huh? That's. Huh? Huh? Crap. I also oh. don't think I have the authority it- to make that decision, but that's okay. While you don't, <laughs> at the same time, I don't want to ever risk not making more money. So mm. you know what? I will ax the quote today. Oh, Viewers, let's go. Wait, check wait, wait, out wait, you... unidentified signal. I will ax the quote. Wait, wait. Do you actually have a quote? Because that's that's the most amusing part. I'll look like an idiot if it if it for content. <clears throat> I mean, that's always why I get it wrong. I'm throwing for content. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you do you want the answer to that? No, I asked out of pure sarcasm. Are you, why are you the way that you are? <laughs> Cuz it's funny. Why? Give me the Every quote, man. Give me the damn try, quote. Mr. Electric kill him. <laughs> 
Give me the damn quote. Just hit me with the quote. I don't. I don't have a quote. Oh, do you really not? I mean, not one that does not immediately reveal what the topic is about. It's one of those types of situations. Oh, okay, great, cool, win-win, let's go. Now, this is one of those ones where I was looking for... So, okay, rolling this back. In this episode, there are not a whole lot of... This is... Okay, okay. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> that was, do that again. That was shockingly good. God damn. Just a, little, just a little disturbed, you know? God damn. All right. Um, no, so we, me and Shai uh, came up with this topic idea as, uh, as kind of an in-between before our next topic, because the topic after this is going to be like a big one. Ooh. Um, Bad and Ab so War? we were like, what was that? Bad Ab War? I did not say that. Ah, there are I'm also taking, other Space Marine Legions we haven't done. True, true, true. But they wouldn't be big. That'd probably be like, Space Wolves would probably be like maybe two episodes. A big one would have to be an event. Big is referring to like importance as well, not just length of episodes. It's taking all of my willpower not to make an adult themed joke right now. Penis. <laughs> anyway, uh, so because of that, we chose something a little bit more like from an underrepresented faction, a little bit more side grade. And then it's like, all right, let's let's do a, something I don't know much about at all of totally out of blue, something that I have very little understanding of. So I decided to begin the research, start looking it up. And I found far less than I would have liked. Oh, um, today we are doing an episode on the Tau. Uh, however, it is what? not simply on the Tau themselves. It is on the Tau Empire, more specifically the Tau Commonwealth and the auxiliary species of the Tau, not the Bluefish people, all of the others. Huh. You would think that there would be, like, a ton of information on that, because, like, the Tau aren't small. I mean, I guess compared to the Imperium and, like, everything, they're small, but... You think there'd be like a absolute truckload of information on that stuff? So there is a decent amount of information on one of them, some information on another, and then goddamn near nothing on the rest. Uh, and it is it is actually quite unfortunate because it's one of those things that is slightly discussed here and there in Tau books. They'll have like certain ones of these auxiliary species in a book and they'll do something really cool and fun, but you never like there's no ca canon artwork or anything of them. So you're kind of just filling in the gaps with your mind. Um, this is still one of my favorite 40K pictures out there. Uh, and I bring this one back up because I think it's relatively uh, worth talking about. Um, oh, the, yeah, I remember this one with all the weird, unidentified Xenos in it. Yes, uh, none of these that we see here have had any lore on them. None of them are uh, have ever received any names. It is all just complete confusion and, and randomness, and that's what makes them fun, because no one knows who they are, no one knows what they're doing, and it's to kind of show us how big and expansive the world of 40K truly is. Uh, I wonder none of how these they, species. I wonder how they commission that art. If this none of them have like any it's done lore. By the same, this looks like the same guy that did the art for um, the Mechanicus. Guy, oh, I yeah, think. yeah. I wonder if they're just like, hey, just do a bunch of weird stuff. We're not going to use any of them. We just want to make this sort of uh, crest of unidentified aliens uh, sending off an unidentified signal. <clears throat> and, um, like, I wonder if they were just like, yeah, just do weird stuff. We just we just need it for art crest thing. They're not going to be expanded on. Just do the freaky stuff. I mean, there certainly looks like there was a good bit of artistic liberty here, considering the mushrooms with guns, <laughs> shark with gun face, and weird orb people. But for the most part, when I think of, like, all of the other possible auxiliaries in the Tau Empire, I think about things like this. Now, these seem a little bit more, uh, less civilized than uh, <laughs> some of the Tau ones, so to speak, but it's interesting. So okay. 
Anyway, to get started, of course, uh, we won't talk about them much because we already have, but there is, of course, the the classic Tau, the, the typical fish person. Mm-hmm. Um, they are not auxiliary. They make up the entirety of the Tau race for the most part. They are called Tau. Yep. yep. Uh, they are the main people, the, the Tau of the Tau Empire. Yep. Classic humanoid in shape, hooved feet, and hands with three fingers, one thumb. Mm-hmm. They have a gray blue colored skin tone, kind of um, a little bit rough in their texture. It's kind of like almost like a little bit leathery the way their their skin feels, um, and they like don't really sweat. It doesn't have much moisture that comes in it. Oh, okay. um, no naturally, perspiration. We, no perspiration. <laughs> Naturally, their face has that eye slit where the nose would be, uh, and you know, like that, you know, they they visually see a bit better than the average human. Uh, mm-hmm. Their their visual spectrum is just slightly more extended. Um, however, their pupils don't dilate, so they have worse depth perception and slower mm-hmm. vision refocusing, especially in low light. Hence. You know, lots of fancy tech on their helmets and stuff. Yeah, to make up for their lack of vision. Sure, sure. <clears throat> um, of course, their physical strength generally varies. Uh, the rate, like the earth cast and water cast Tau probably can't uh, or probably would lose in a, in a fist fight with a regular guardsman. But a fire cast Tau is definitely the stronger type. Um, mm-hmm. They're like roughly the same size than a human, maybe baseline slightly weaker. Um, because the, the Tau homeworld gravity is a bit lower than Terra's is, so ah. not as, like, dense muscle-wise. Right, right. I mean, it's like, it's not, it's one of those things where, like, you know, training is so different, you know, if you're Acadian and, and a fire cast Tau get in a fist fight, it's like 55, 45% ch- a chance in the human, maybe, but then, like, he fights an Eldar and he probably gets trounced because Eldar are really fast and nimble. But then, like, if it's a Catachin, he just breaks his back into a million pieces because <laughs> yeah. he's a Bains six, him. seven yep. foot baby ogren. You know, it, it's all it's all depending. But and no, no, the most the, the old Catachin guardsman is just tearing through every towel. This is going to literally back break a crisis suit. You get like Iron Hand Strachan rolling up and just the like, genuinely <laughs> in game punching a crisis suit to death. Like, you know, it's whatever. Have they whatever actually done that? Did they actually punch a crisis suit and win? Fist fight well, no, a crisis in, suit and won? In game, I said in game. Like he, uh, he hits pretty hard in game. Okay, in game. It's just gotcha. funny to see. I, I, oh. I got to be honest with you. I was like, I wouldn't be surprised if there actually was a canon story where an old Catachin guard went hand-to-hand with a crisis suit and legit one. I I would actually be surprised because the crisis suit's quite big. And also, if that ever happened, it would be the Indiana <laughs> Jones meme. The Catachim would shout some imp- for the Emperor crap, and then Indiana Jones is the crisis suit and would just vaporize him into a million pieces. <laughs> or it could be a Sly Marbo meme, right? Or a Sly Marbo. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> Tau themselves are uh, are, you know relatively they're pretty much blue humans a bit more leathery it's like your classic star trek alien where they're just humans with thing on head yeah they uh, just look a little different but they're basically humanoid they're basically little, humanoid little, you know yeah little, a little differences, more in this but side a little less in this side mm-hmm. humanoid aliens yep. so yeah pretty pretty classic mm-hmm. oh shy says bricky stop i found art Oh it's no! Oh, n- of, oh, of what? No. Oh no! She's not elaborating. Oh wow! Is that no? That's not official. That does not look official. That wow! No way! I I am. I, you know, I have to say, I said I wouldn't be surprised, and here I am, actually surprised. <laughs> <laughs> no I way said, that's official it, it, I said I wasn't going to be surprised And I am surprised It's from the Lexicarum And they only use official art Do they actually Oh they do only use official art Well there you go No Ricky. way that, there okay, you well, go. All right, all right. Uh, There's Iron Hand Strachan Local <laughs> baller Catachin ripping the head off of a crisis suit Tau fans yep. I am so sorry I told you it wouldn't surprise me. I am so sorry, Tau fans. Uh, the Tau um, just can't catch a break, can they? 
They lose. They like. They like lose in every official artwork. It's so sad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, pass the towel. The towel themselves. Uh, let's talk about the most known auxiliary, which is the Crutus Aviana, or the Crute. ah, the Crute. Eat them um, up, eat them up. Reese's puffs, Reese's puffs. I, okay, <laughs> I it, I was confused what you were, you meant by that, and then I remember that you you know that the Crute eat people. <laughs> yeah, they eat people for the information. <laughs> Eat them up, eat them up, eat them up, up, eat them up. <laughs> uh, I, I, mo- I, must, I must say, their homeworld is called Peck, which I can't tell is just right. a really bad GW meme for, you know, the fact that they look like birds. Uh, could be, could be. Or, you know, they're a little hungry, a little peckish. Um, but the Crutes are obviously look a bit more avian. They have four digits on each hand on foot. And almost a kind of hollowish bone structure. Uh, their skin is is very rough and has those uh, barbed spines kind of across it, both on mm. their body and their head. Um, if you look at their legs, you can kind of see uh, some of the spines kind of poking out a little bit. Oh, here yeah, 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 like yeah. Hair. Mm-hmm. Um, they, of course, they have their uh, – well, their color is – between brown and green and everything kind of in between with tons of tribal markings generally surrounding them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also have exceptionally dense muscle structures. So despite the fact that they look kind of gangly, they're actually stronger physically than most human soldiers. Oh, uh, because it's just all muscle. It's just all really dense muscle in there, even though it's a little on the spindly side. Yeah, like, you know, for the most part, if you see a guy who's – pretty big you assume that they are also pretty strong but you also see like it also kind of goes with diet you know like you see those like shaolin monks and stuff who are just really like strong lean guys but they look kind of small uh but they mm-hmm. they're they hit like freight trucks like truck. they're extremely yeah, yeah, yeah. strong mm-hmm. um so they're a lot more like dense like the muscle structure is really dense um, okay. In fact, they often have these really quick muscle contractions, so their strikes, like their punches, are almost like uh, like spring loaded, and they're, they oh, can jump so they, really high. So they got like the one inch punch, the where they break the wood. Yeah, kind Absolutely. of like like they they punch and and jump really well because they almost have like spring loaded muscles. Ooh, um, so you don't want to get in a fist fight with a crew. No, no, a crew will actually do pretty pretty well against a, a general, uh, I mean, you know, we just saw a Katachin rip a crisis suit's head off, but that was Iron Hand Strachan, <laughs> so that he, he's a little different. He's above um, and beyond even a Katachin, yeah. Yeah, like, whenever I think of, like, regular guardsmen, I think of, like, a pretty buff Cadian guy, and mm-hmm. for the most part, yeah, a crew probably could take him pretty well, because they are quite strong. Yeah. Um, also, their guns look cool with the little little blade on the end of it, like long gun with the blade on the end of it. Love that. I wonder if it had any inspiration from the Tuscan Warriors in Star Wars. The gun looks very similar. The really long version of it. Oh yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? Can you give Maybe? us a Tuscan Warrior yell? Mm, I mean, I could probably try, but I don't want to. <laughs> that, that's perfectly fine. If you do it wrong, we'll laugh at you for years. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's going to be a sound clip forever. Um. Anyway, the thing on the, the crew's head, that little ganglia you see there, um, mm-hmm. it's actually a sensory organ. And so oh. it, it kind of like, you know, a little like the quills gather information around their uh, environment. Um, and their eyes actually have no pupils and are pretty like like a milky color, um, mm-hmm. which allows them to generally see past the infrared spectrum, which is one of the reasons why crude are just really good hunters. They see everything. Oh, and wow. Their, yeah. Their sensory apparatus gangly on their back is just extremely handy. I was going to say having infrared vision is a big plus in combat like that's huge uh by itself let alone having little barbs that can do all the extra sensory nonsense that's yeah i could yep yeah, it's probably really hard to hide from a crute now the crute generally uh, the thing you always think eat them up eat them up like when you <laughs> think of the crute uh, you think of the fact that they evolve by consuming the flesh of other races mm-hmm. um the process itself is called shaping 
uh, which is in if you actually funny enough in the tabletop, uh, a leader of a crew is called the crew shaper. Like a, instead of sergeant, it's shaper oh, because okay. they are the ones who are really good at knowing what traits are desirable to be consumed for like maximum genetic potential. Oh, oh, that's cool. So, so they they know what to eat. Yes, they they know exactly what is good and what's bad. Uh, yeah. And I believe in the Caiaphas Cain book, you will remember one of those crew ate a dead. Um, human and then spit it out because it was tainted because it was yeah. gene stealer cult yep and that's um, how they found out about the cult yes that's how that's and that and uh, that's kind of how they figured it all out and then Jurgen took a melta gun and destroyed the patriarch that um, smelly pile of garbage what a good man i love Jurgen is such a baller um <laughs> yeah. but shy posted over there on the right those are various species of crute uh, that have evolved in certain home worlds by eating the various fauna and flora there. So you have like your kind of more of more webbed like sea crew on the top left, mm-hmm. spiny dinosaur crew on the bottom left, big buff crew top right, flying mm-hmm. crew. Um, there are crew hounds, which are literally crew that look like dogs. Yep. Yep. yep, uh, yep. There is. There, the, I, I see the picture of them. Yep. There is the crew talks. Which it looks is the big one right there. It looks like an Elcor. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, which obviously evolved from bigger animals, but they're a little bit dumber. So, you know, on so one side, big muscle. On the other side, you know, like you gotta you gotta no pick. Brains. You gotta pick what you want to eat. Yep. Oh. And, and and so they become the mounts, I assume, because as they eat the bigger sort of dumb animals, their brain shrinks and they become so animalistic you kinda have to tame them. And you might as well just use them as like a mount or like a a battle steed. I mean, the they they, they had a reasoning for why Crute get what they get, um, but it's it's one of those classic like games workshop like they affect their DNA helixes in this way, and, and it's I'm like ah okay it's some pseudoscience alien crap whatever it changes their body and changes their minds what they eat good enough for me good enough yep yeah, okay. Um, sometimes crude have been seen to have consumed dead dark Eldar and have become Ooh. particularly malicious and uh, awful to be around afterwards. Uh, not surprising. If if you inherit the traits of what you eat and you eat a Drakari, yeah, you know, I kind of imagine you would become an insufferable piece of... So, yeah, you know, I that, that tracks. Mm-hmm. For the most part, they... Uh, you know, like they start to revel their kills a lot more. Yeah, um, I'm sure. Which is, which is very bizarre. Um, Shy makes a good point here. Yeah, they can't really eat Necrons because it will develop little tiny scarabs in them, mm. and they will die. Uh, they can't eat Nids because the genetic makeup is just too random because it's built from the biomass of anything and everything. Right. Um, Chaos <clears throat> is poisonous because, Tainted, oh, God. Yep, spit it out. Yep, spit it out immediately. Yep. And interestingly enough, I'll leave the last part uh, alone for a sec because <laughs> – the, well, just, just because the uh, – I want to – the crew t- um, joined yeah. the Tau Commonwealth way back when because their plants were under siege by a massive volume of orcs and the Tau assisted them. Mm-hmm. Um, so often the crew t- – Offered their services one as thanks to the Tau, but also generally as just mercenary services. Their clans are very tribal and mostly offer their uh, skills as hunters, as mercenaries to to kind of everyone. Uh, there is that one in the Blackstone Fortress guy. The Votan will hire them sometimes for tracking. Um, so long as they're being decently compensated financially, they'll kind of go with whoever they want. So long as you do not eat the Tau. Because the Tau don't <laughs> like that very much. They get pretty pissed. Have Are there examples of the Kroot eating the Tau? And, like, I mean, what sort of, like, uh, genetic traits would they inherit from the Tau? Would they just turn a little more blue, uh, get the hooves? Uh, would, they, would their eyesight get worse? Like, I mean, it, it might. They're also, I mean, you know, their brains might get a little bit more developed depending on what cast oh, of a Tau they eat. Also, uh, you know, the towel like it when they have normal, um, <laughs> normal, what is the word, uh, burials. 
for their friends that die and and yeah. don't have their comrade eat them. Yeah. Um, for the most part, yeah, the Kroot are, at this point, still part of the Tau Empire, and they have the most represent- representation on the tabletop. Uh, Kroot Hounds, Kroot Hoxes, they're all things you can run. Uh, their models are old. <laughs> um, however, old. they did just remake a kill team uh, squad of um, of Kroot for a, a kill team box and they look great okay okay i don't know if Shai the, can post the old and the new but uh they look pretty cool on the tabletop if you're like a tau and you're running crute and you say kill a space marine can you choose to eat its corpse and get bonuses so if i'm you know what that's a great question my mind says no but i i know that they probably because it's a little bit too specific I am positive that there is I'm, – I'm pulling up the app right now. Um, Ooh, there is like a – if you kill right. something in melee, you gain this for the rest of the game. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's such a big part of them that there – you know, there would be something about that, right? There'd oh, yeah. There's the something. new minis. Ooh. New minis they look, do good. look good. I mean, to be fair, the old ones looked fine. Like, they're old. The old ones are – is that the old ones? Uh, yeah, they were fine. There's nothing wrong with the old ones. But the new ones okay. look great. Yeah. So, Kroot Farstalkers have oh. a, a different rule. Their rule is, oh my god, those dogs. Okay. Shy, yeah, those are two pictures of, of the new ones. I thought one was the old one. Yeah, that, that old one is out. Oof. Ah, so here, here we go. So, yeah, the Farstalkers are like bounty hunters, the new ones. Mm-hmm. Um, the old ones do have a rule that says Grizzly Feast. If this unit destroys an enemy unit in the fight phase until the end of the battle, they have the five up feel no pain ability. So, oh, okay. you know, like it's just a classic, like kill something in the fight phase, eat something, get tankier, you know? Yeah. Streamlined for the game version. Yeah. 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 It's not like you're going to be like, Oh, choose a sp- If you're eat a space brain, evolve into a human with big muscles and completely. Ch- it's, it's just a, you get tankier. Which is probably yeah, the best I, way to do it. And, like, you can actually take a, a Kroot Shaper, as I mentioned, and put it in a group of carnivores. So they start with a f- six-up feel no pain. And if you eat something, it goes to a four-up instead of a five-up, which is better because it knows what to eat. You know, mm-hmm. classic classic stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, old Kroot, yeah, don't look great. They look like angry bird people and kind of funny. Yeah, they, they, look, they look creepy, actually. They look like something out of a horror movie. And the new ones just kind of look like... The new ones just look good. They they look more streamlined, more sleek. Uh, just yeah, just better overall. Yeah. Shy, can you can you post the crew talks the crew talks writer? I just I think it's so funny. <laughs> it's such a hilarious <laughs> hilarious uh, model. Yeah, shy post it. Shy post it. Oh, that is that is actually pretty good. It's just pretty the, it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's just it has the stand just taped on his back. It's nice. good. It's great stuff. Nice. That that is pretty good. Yeah. He ride the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, that's that's generally the crew. You know, they. Uh, I'm glad they got that new model of bounty hunters and stuff. They look really cool, um, and they're pretty fun. You know, we read that story in the Blackstone Fortress about that one crew that got drunk and started making horrible sound effects, and then the rogue trader was like, "Oh, he's trying to sing." <laughs> Is that what that is? Ugh. So it's pretty fun. Um, yeah. Anyway, next up we have is the only other one that has a model on the tabletop, and everything <laughs> else doesn't have a model. Uh, these are the Vespids. Uh, oh. Vespids. If you can bees? Uh, guess what? Bees? Maybe like insects? Close. Yes, oh. insect like. Very good. Let's go. You're, you want to uh, know how I got that? It's a really stupid reason. Why? Because there's a Pokemon called Vespa Queen, and it's a big B. And I figured it had to be something like that. Isn't like a Vespid or like like that abbreviation for something? Probably. Ah. But, yeah, Vespa Queen. A- that's how I got it. Anyway, yeah, bees. Or not really bees, but like bugs. They are a bipedal insect-like race. Uh, they have some chitinous. Is it chitin or chitin? It's chitin, right? 
Um, I don't know. I thought it was chitinous. I thought so too, but but people, eh, whatever. Vespa <laughs> is literally a wasp in Italian. Isn't there a car called a Vespa? Uh, so it's like a, like a really. Oh, it's a scooter. Vespa oh, like a scooter. Hey, so and it's it called goes, wasp. It's like, yeah. Okay. It sounds like anyway, a wasp. Um, I'm going to call it chitin. Chitin is high okay. uh, and pretty strong, like like a biological exo armor. Um, their wings produce this really interesting ultrasonic tone that helps them control their technology and, you know, fly <laughs> as well. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, they are actually very good when it comes to sightseeing. Uh, they have three pairs of eyes on their face. One sees oh. in the visual spectrum, one sees in the infrared spectrum, and one sees in the ultraviolet spectrum. Wow. They, they, they have creepy faces with those three sets of eyes, which is... Gr- that's... Man, how come the crew haven't eaten one of these things to get extra super ultra eyesight? Uh, and wings. Maybe because they would develop some of the other unfavorable traits. Uh, I don't know, wow. but I know they also have their weird mandibles in their mouths with those sharp teeth. I mean, that's um, cool. You can eat better with that. Why wouldn't Why wouldn't the crew want that? So, well, it, well, because you don't don't forget, you also obtain all the other traits. Yeah. So. And also, don't eat your friends. Oh, that's right. This is all still in the. Oh, that's true. You wouldn't want to eat your allies. That's okay. All right. That one makes. All right. You could. You should have started with that one. I I assumed it was clear that you don't cannibalize your friends. <laughs> You're looking awful tasty today, Bricky. With some barbecue oh, sauce. I have been working out. Mm, oh, that's right. You, there's no, there's no, there's not even any fat on you. You'd be like eating buffalo, just that bland is and not, tasteless. That is not true. There is plenty of fat on me. I'm trying to get rid of it. Ugh, anyway, gross. there's their yeah. minis. Oh, I've seen these before. They They're are, really um, cool. Oh, wait, cool. You know where I've seen these before? Where? You remember? You remember the game show that we did with? The uh, Kirioth, where I picked out minis that I oh, thought yeah, looked cool. Oh yeah, that's right. This is one that's of the ones. Right. You like these pieces of shit? What? They look fine. I think they look cool. What's what? What? What do you not like about them? The way they look. They look great. I think. I think they look really cool. I love. I, I love the yellow armor that they got from. I'm assuming the Tau and the wings. They look cool. I like them. I like that. All right, I think they look awful. Uh, regardless, um, well, you this is one of those no weird. Taste. I know. Well, I know that. <laughs> um, I will say that it is a common theme here, where the Vespids were perceived as never really joining the greater good because their society was wildly different than the Taos, and I think far more violent. Um, Makes sense. Uh, and then eventually the Ethereals created this very fancy communication headset that helped translate their weird alien language. And ever since they gave them that headset, they were very keen on joining the greater good. Huh, really? Just because yeah. they got a headset that makes it easier to translate their gibberish? N- no, I don't think the headset only did that. Oh, gotcha. So the headset is their way of uh, brainwashing the Vespids the way they brainwash the rest of the Tau Empire. Well, let's we don't use uh, harsh language in the Tau Commonwealth <laughs> like brainwash. Sorry. We prefer subtle communication. <laughs> subtle suggestivity. We, yeah, it's subtle suggestion. It's all uh, Imperium lies. We don't. What? No, it was a. It was a willing, conscious choice by our populace. Hey, they gave them a communication headset, and suddenly they were super down for joining the Tau. You can figure that one out how you'd like. Yeah, interpretations are open. Um, but they are very much used in scouting roles. Um, the one with the helmet on there is the only one that has that communication headset, the sergeant. They are called the Vespid Stingwing. Um, uh, okay. <clears throat> wait, they are called... Okay, the that, that, uh, to be fair, that helmet does look dumb, I guess. So, like, the ones without the helmet, I really like the helmet. Kind of looks like he's just wearing a beehive on his head. 
Sorry, I got that wrong. It's the Vespid Strain. The Vespid Strain is the... They're all called Stingwings. The Strain is the Sergeant. Um, the helmet is kind of goofy, but it is the only one that can translate their statements to the Tau. Um, okay. And a lot of they their have guns... Cool name, Stingwing? That's cool. Come on. Vespid Stingwings. Vespid yeah, they are kind of fun. Stingwing. Yeah. Um, their guns are actually really cool, and I feel like they could do a lot more with this. Um, it's all based on technology from their home world. Uh, mm-hmm. It's exotic crystals that frequency is adjusted and changed due to the ultrasonic tone on their wings. So Ooh. combine that with Tau technology that they've upgraded with. And next thing you know, you've got some actually pretty damn strong guns. Yeah, like, so if – I also imagine that's great because, like, if you don't have their wings, you kind of sort of can't use their guns. So, like, if you kill one, it's like, ah, I've got their gun. I'm going to shoot you. It's like, well, you can't because you don't have the wings to hit the crystal with the frequency, right? So Something kind of like that. Um, the the guns are, like, basically, like, slightly less powerful, pl- like, plasma guns. So, you know, they kind of hit. Yeah. Yeah, they're strong and they're kind of they're the only ones that can use them. That's dope. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah, because the the Vespids are the only ones that can manipulate the crystal. No one else can shoot them. Yeah, so it's it's pretty handy. They're they're nice. fun, and that is the only model they have on the tabletop. You can only run Vespid sting wings, and that is it. Oh well, that's unfortunate. Just now, the sting- let's let's talk about all the other. Ones, the ones that you have no idea about because there are no models. Oh, well, that's a shame. You think they're ever going to make them? You think they're ever going to expand the Tau Empire to have um, more of these races that don't have minis? Well, there is a list of the assimilated races in the Tau Empire. Whoa. Um, almost all of these have literally a sentence. What? Really? Uh, w- w- like, w- uh, I mean, I was going to say, why bother... Uh, pretending like they exist, but it's like, well, you got to make the Tau Empire seem like it's a much more uh, widespread empire than just, you know, oh, we only have the crude and the Vespid that are recognized. It's like, well, they've got all these other things too, and you got to make them look a little more impressive, right? That, and also you think of it more like, um, oh, how would you say it? Kind of like... These are ways to make the Tau like look in, more interesting in a lore perspective. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you you have a Shadow Sun book, and they talk about how we were fighting along five sides of uh, Tau, three squads of Galg, and then two Greet, and it's like world building, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yep. We'll start with the easiest one: uh, the Guevessa or the Guevessa auxiliaries. Uh, they're just humans. We've talked about them before, haven't we? Yep. I feel like some, they got brought humans, up in a book or something. There are some humans that have been liberated. Uh, well, I think also the Caiaphas Cain book. Um, oh, But there right. are yeah, some yeah, yeah, humans yeah. just liberated by the Tau, and the Tau, uh, and they get reabsorbed outside of the Imperium, and then they help serve the Tau. And they probably live a lot better of a life than they do in the Imperium. Um. Not, oh, yeah. I mean, probably still not a great life, but a hell of a lot better than the Imperium gives them. I mean, to be fair, being like, oh, yes, the human lives a better life than they would in the Imperium is not a super high bar. <laughs> so I imagine it is quite a bit better. Um, but yeah. Yeah, cool uh, there are no too. minis. There are no minis for them. That's a custom fan made one. Um, ah. But it looks good, you know? Yeah, it does. Sure. Um, there was an old faction known as the Demigurg or Demigurg, D- Demigurge, I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's uh, the old uh, uh, squats before yep. they got uh, abolished and turned into the Votan. Not abolished, yes. but before they got, uh, before, before they got squatted. They they are now um, Demiurg. Oh, did I add a G to that? Yeah, probably, but who cares? Oh, I did add a G. Crap. Yep. Demi- <laughs> Demiurg. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean they were the you're correct, they were the old squats. Mm-hmm. Uh they were have been misclassified and since retconned into the leagues of Votan. Yep. Um some apparently joined the Tau Commonwealth and the Tau Empire just because you know they either owe them a debt or something happens. Often they're just mercenaries. Mm-hmm. Um 
but I only remember know. this from like the the squat episode that I did because some of it's still floating around in there. Uh, yeah, they were in a they, they were allied with the Tau in one of the Battlefleet Gothic games. I think you you actually see them flying around with like the Tau or something. Probably something like that. Um, yeah. They also did trade a lot with the Tau. I think they helped give them their ion technology. Um, or at least helped assisted them with giving it, uh, giving them that stuff. You'll you'll find that a lot of the Tau's fancy pantsy gear is normally in uh, assimilated from another culture. Like I think their wow. ion weapons or like their railgun or something like that was originally the Votons and uh, from trade. Uh, okay, nothing wrong something with that. Like that. You know. Um. But anyway, those are the other ones. Now for the giant list of other ones that don't have much. Um, no. There is one called the Nikasar or Nikasar. Uh, okay. These are actually a little prevalent in the Shadow Sun book. Uh, they are a large bear slash bird mixture. It looks like a big bear, but with a bird like face and attributes. Oh, are we, are we talking like owl bear? Like you know what? Yeah, probably like owl bear, no wings though. Oh man, you're GW. You have a chance to make an owl bear mini, and you're not taking it. What's going on? Like that? That's just print the money. Like everybody's gonna buy an owl bear. Oh, and it gets even more interesting than that. Uh, they are a heavily psychic race. Uh, oh, they're they psychic have- owl bears. They're psychic owl bears with a massive appetite to explore the galaxy. They are kind of like the Quarians. They're semi nomadic uh, with a massive want to. Well, the Quarians got that way because they screwed up, uh, but yeah, they do this way because they want to, uh, with this wanton curiosity to explore the galaxy. And they were the first race to join the Tau Commonwealth and have since assisted the Tau greatly in their faster than light travel. Uh, and they can also move a lot quicker than the Tau because of their psychic power. So they're very often uh, scouting missions and scouting fleets. I am so disappointed in you, GW. Psychic nomad owl bears, and they're just like, nah. We'll make one Vespid mini and call it a day, and not touch the the psychic owl bear. <laughs> there was a story in the Shadow Sun book where the uh, Nikasar beat the shit. Well, with help, <laughs> I bet with help beat the shit out of a plague marine because they have quote uh, power claw sized talons on their hands, and oh. I think I think one of their friends got like like murdered horribly by the plague marines because it's the plague marines yep. and went on a berserk rage and started fighting them. It was pretty cool. I'm also so disappointed because in Baldur's Gate three, I played a druid. I oh, I, as soon as I got owl bear wild shape, that's all I ever turned into all the time. And uh, come on, man, make the mini, make the mini, make the mini. Um, there is another race known as the Galg, G A L G S. <laughs> the Sound Galg. Like your lunch not sitting quite well. It sounds like something's <clears throat> coming back up there, pal. <laughs> um, the Galg, you actually remember the Galg. Uh, well, actually, do you remember the Galg? It That's- sounds familiar, and I've seen that picture before, but Smooth Brain doesn't remember anything about them. So this was actually, uh, the Galg are kind of funny. They are a giant worm-like species with no eyes, none of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um they are incorporated into the Tau Empire and are not particularly warlike and neither that advanced. Um, they created a massive paradise on their world. No suffering, no anything. Thousands of years in an amazing, beautiful world where eventually uh, when the Tau arrived, uh, ha- they were like super happy to give up their lives of pleasure to seek actual purpose, purpose within the greater good. Um, some Galgs say, no way, ma'am, they, we were conquered and coerced by the Tau in order to join the greater good. We, we were not at all given a choice in this matter. This is a bunch of BS. Mm -hmm. Um, others are like, no, we finally have like good stuff. 
Oh, hmm. this is interesting. You want to read this, uh, uh, DK? Sure. <clears throat> The Tau arrive at your world with a fleet, tanks, attack craft, fire warriors, and battle suits, and they ask if you want to join in their quest to achieve the greater good. Well, that's the way I think it happened with the Galgs. The Galgs were cr- clever enough to say yes, but there were some records that show what happens to those worlds who say no. Sooner or later, they either say yes, with their cities burning and their shoulders rotting in their open graves, or they are in no position to say anything at all. Yeesh. Their shoulders, huh? Yeesh. Soldiers. Uh, did I say shoulders? You did. It was very funny. Oh well, you know it's uh, it's uh, it's it's Arm Day. I I guess it's it's I don't I don't know. It's fine. Uh, but no, it, it makes a good point. <laughs> it's like that's yeah. how you know if I if I arrive if I arrive to your doorstep with with a gun and I'm like DK, buy me a coffee. And, and yeah. later on, I say, yeah, DK was really nice. He just bought me a coffee. <laughs> it's like well. <laughs> He had a rifle pointed at my head. Of course, I'm gonna buy him a coffee. So, so the the question is a little different. Um, yeah. However, uh, regardless of the current state of the Galg, um, it's it's <laughs> it's kind of funny. They are also mercenaries. Um, some freedom fighters joined the the Alpha Legion in a campaign to kill <laughs> the Ultramarines. Oh, um, let's go! Let's go! Well some, done, Galg. Let's go. Sorry. Some fought along the 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 slith s- 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 the the snake people Eldar outcasts. Um, some they don't much like humans either because they think they're also <laughs> awful tyrannical people because they they see they I mean, are huge. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, often when the when the humans see them, they just burn their planets to dust. So they have a pretty huge hatred of humanity. And mm-hmm. so, for some, Tau is the lesser of two evils. Okay. What what exactly do the Galg do per se? Because like you said, they're like kind of brainless, boneless things that live in pair. Like, what exactly do they do? Like, how do they fight? Like, what's their thing aside from having a paradise world that the Tau were just like join us or die? They have a bunch of limbs they that said. they can crush you and kill you with. Oh, okay. They're just really big. These really big that, tentacle monsters. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there was the Blackstone Fortress excerpt we talked about, where there were a couple galgs drinking at a bar, and then oh, either the, right, either the rogue trader or the Kroot. I don't remember. I think it was the Kroot. They were talking about like on the Blackstone. How do you Fortress. how do you know our language? <laughs> oh yeah, right. They know his language because the crew <laughs> ate their like captain or something on yeah. the ship. Yeah, and the rogue trader was like, wow, why they suddenly get so mad? I told them how I learned their language. Uh, yeah, and then I think the gal like tried to choke the rogue trader to death and he was like, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> um, okay. Now right, I remember. Right, I, yeah, that's right. I, I kind of was forgetting it too, but you you helped me remember. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So that's the Galg. Uh, they're they're chilling, I guess. Um, yep. Outside of them, there. Oh goodness gracious! Okay, so Great we balls also. Of fire. I mean, there's a couple other ones. There's like the Vorg. <laughs> what a funny name, the Vorg. Uh, the the Vorg. They are a V O R G H. They have again one line of of text. They are a massive Xeno species that are. The size of like an imperial knight. Whoa! And like they each are each one is the size of a knight. Yup. Wow, that's a big boy. And they just—they're apparently totally super duper, um, super duper kind and nice and passive and fine with everything until you make them angry, and then they're a, then they're a giant knight, basically. <laughs> Sheesh! You 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 think if you were the Tau, you would want to get as many Vorgs as you can and just cattle prod them and point them in the direction of your enemies? <laughs> cattle prod them? <laughs> I mean, it's a bit harsh, but it's it's the grim darkness of the fortieth millennium. Who cares? What does an imperial knight-sized cattle prod look like? Do you just like 
stick them <laughs> with, a, with like a railgun sized uh, zappy thing. Yeah, basically, it, it, it looks like a, a drill, and it's like, is that a drill? It's like, no, no, it's a cattle prod, and they just got him equipped on the on the Vork shoulders, and it's like, you know, they just poof, like pile bunker them into their shoulders, you know. Unfortunately, at this point, we get into the world where there is just not much left. Um, no. There, like that, have any genuine lore? There is one that's kind of fun called the Torellian. Um, T a r e l l i a m. They are known as the Torellian Dog Soldiers and are kind of like a humanoid reptile mixture that look. They have like the face of dogs. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, they are like basically their language is a bunch of snarling, growling, and barking. Snapping their their jaws and showing their teeth. They're dogs, classic. Yeah. Um, they are huh. very honor obsessed. Long rituals of oath and respect. Um, and if the ceremonies are interrupted, they will become quite pissed. Uh, but according to legend, the Imperium virus bombed a lot of their worlds during the as Great they, Crusade. As they do, as they do. So they have a seething, deep hatred of humanity. At all times. <laughs> As many non-human species do have a loathing of the Imperium. That's fair. So now they're Tao's best friend. Um, they, well, yes, they're Tao's best friend. One, because they're a species for hire. A lot of them are, are mercenaries. Um, and also <laughs> because, you know, they are fine with embracing the greater good and furthering its cause because of either one, being part of the greater good is good, or two, Subtle brainwashing. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, oh, right, right. Subtle, yeah, uh, su- uh, 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 suggestivity. We just suggest that maybe you want to be part of the greater good. We don't do anything past that. We're brainwashing. There, there is a hilarious, a hilarious segment that says a group of Torellians Tarele- attempted to join the Red Corsairs and were in the middle <laughs> of pledging their oaths to Huron Blackheart when the Chaos Lord had more pressing matters. After telling them to stop the time-consuming ritual, the Torellians became enraged and attacked the Chaos Space Marines and were <laughs> then promptly slaughtered by the Chaos Space Marines. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I get it. You don't like your rituals being interrupted, but my, my, my God, those are Chaos Space Marines, and you are dog people. You, 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 re- your you really need to, yeah, you really need to, being <laughs> right does not mean you're going to be alive. <laughs> yeah, pick, pick your battles, friend. Pick your battles. Shy also always has the best meme, which is, of course I'm xenophobic. Look at all, like, have you seen these aliens? My brother in the Imperium, you killed all the non-scary ones. (laughs) You killed all the peaceful ones. Because they're not Um, human. Yep, yep. There is also another interesting one called the Morellian. Uh, The Morellian are a, also known as the Morellian Death Sworn, which is the coolest name ever. Ooh, hell yeah. That is what their soldiers are called and have been known to fight for the Tau for the most part, um, along with their reserves, as like with Crutes and Vespids and the rest. Mm-hmm. Um, but they uh, also have fought as part of that same Alpha Legion uh, group to kill the <laughs> Ultramarines. Well done. Boy, they're really trying to get me on the Xenos appreciation side. Ooh. Uh, I will. I will say, uh, <laughs> there's nothing really about them and their their fighting style. However, I there is a nice little thing right here that says physiology. Morellian younglings have soft flesh that the dark Eldar are known to use, taking the flesh from several younglings to make dark, supple robes. Oh no, they make robes out of oh jeez. I look. I get it. You're dark Eldar. You're Drukari. You, you like your skin coats, but come on, man. Oh, oof. Everything past this, we don't got much. Uh, there, There's a ton of other names. There is the Thraxians, the Geatrix, the Herenian, the the Domati, the, the Rangon, the Ostense Council. So on and so forth. It sounds like it should be so important. It's literally, council is in the name. That sounds like it should be important. It it is an alien group that have acted as mercenaries. Whip-de-doo. Oh, wow, Uh, yeah, hooray. Wonderful. 
They, as far like the thing is, is that so much of this is interesting and pivotal to the Tao's current technological prowess. You know, the the Nikasar uh, owl bears helped them get void better void faring capabilities. The Voton assisted them with ion technology. The Vespids crystals, I think, helped them with like augury sensor arrays, or uh, one of them gave them like scanning suites. Like, all of the really fancy-pantsy stuff you can take in the Tau are often done from some kind of uh, of other Xenos race. Yeah. If, if this wait. episode has taught me nothing else... Uh, wait, what, what did I say? The Brachy- <laughs> you gotta read that. The Brachiera are a tiny, dexterous-limbed crustacean race. They are unmatched in the delicate assembly of small plasma generators needed to fuel Tau Earth Castle inventions. Wow. It's time for crab. (laughs) Tiny little crab builders that make their Tau Earth Cast inventions. But, like... Like, That sounds important. Like, why isn't there more on them? Like, you know, a, a crisis battle suit, for example, um, that we, we've seen earlier, um, <laughs> they they always have all these kinds of support systems. Tau have been known for their support systems. So mm-hmm. they have, like, shield drones, marker drones, shield generators, weapon support systems, battle suit support systems. Um, you know, if you pull out, like, the Riptide battle suit, if you look at the war gear, it has things like... I don't know, the the Nova Charge system and, and all these kinds of things like that. And it's all from off, often from another fancy race where you get about a single sentence of lore. And it's so yeah. disappointing. Yeah. Man, like the what I have learned more than anything from this episode is there are so many cool Xenos factions that deserve a mini, man. But then at the same time, I'm like, well, if you make all these minis, they're going to start overshadowing the Tau. And that's kind of the whole point of the Tau is to be the, you know, the main blue people and the crisis suits and the robots. And uh, if you start expanding too far out, it's like, oh, I don't want a crisis suit. I want a big owl bear or I want a big uh, Vorg or something like that. So I guess, you know, you can still make more lore about him. You can still make art for him, G-Dub. Sheesh. Sheesh. Yeah, I mean, that's almost worse, is that there's no art for any of them. Yeah, at least, at least a little bit. At least a little bit more. And, and yeah, yeah that, that's one of the most annoying parts, is that, you know, people who like Tau like them for a lot of reasons. Some of them like them because they are, you know, Gundam aesthetic. Some of them like them because they enjoy the collaboration of races com- completely different than every other faction in the game, for the most part. Mm-hmm. Some people like them because they like the the higher um, like pew pew sci fi instead of the yeah. I'm ramming you with a church. Um, and <laughs> some and I know one, some people I've heard interestingly like the Tau because they like them as the naive upstarts. Where it's like, no, it's ah. good that the Tau are the good guys because it shows that even being the good guys gets you stomped in the absolute dirt in the world of 40k. Oh um, yeah. Absolutely. Like, it's so weird to me that people didn't like the fact that the Tau were the good guys. It's like, oh, it has to be more grim darkness. Like, what what could be more grim dark in in this setting than being the good guy? You ha- you everybody's trying to kill you, and you're naively trying to be good and wholesome, and always heading in the right direction, and always follow the light. Oh, be good to every race. And it's like in 40k in the grim dark. That is the worst position you could be in with all of the different factions that are out there. That is literally the worst thing that you could be. So, unfortunately, that collective, that like that idea of this collection of alien species rising up against the terrors of the galaxy, the Tyranids, the Orcs, the Imperial Crusade, they're, they're like, all right, this is this is for like our future. The the small. Xenos that were all attempted to be exterminated during during the Great Crusade. This is like the time. And then you get no lore and no pictures. And that's very sad. Yeah, that is very sad. Yeah. I know that every single faction in 40K is going to get new miniatures uh, when their codex comes out. We've been seeing it with the Necrons lately. We saw it with the funny spindly ad mech guy because they're the ones that are coming next. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm curious on what the Tau are going to get because they might just get another goofy battle suit and nothing else, and I will be thoroughly sad. It would be really cool if they at least leaned into the fact that they are this sort of collection of of uh, this collective of Xenos races that are like, no, we're going to rise up against the awful tyranny of the galaxy. And we at least get some lore and art of, of some of these factions. That would be really cool, even though it's obviously going to be focused around the battle suits and the Gundams and the, the, the Tau warriors and stuff. It'd be, it'd be nice. It'd be nice if the others got a little spotlight. If if the Tau had more like variety in that, I actually might be more keen on playing them and like actually giving them a shot. Um, yeah. But right now, I, I I only like right now. If I were to build a Tau army, it would be Devilfish, Triple Ghost Keels, a Riptide, and like a Storm Surge because Big Mech, um, Big Mech, but yeah. Big Mech, and also a lot of the minis, um, the auxiliary minis, I think look like crap. Those new crew look great. Yeah, uh, but yeah, the new crew do look really good. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's it for me. That's all I got, cool. unfortunately, and that's all GW has too. Oh, GW, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. One day, uh, if the new Tau Codex comes out with any extra lore, which I don't think it will, but if it does, uh, we will have an additional episode, and I will talk about it. I am until hoping. then. Everyone, check out Unidentified Signal, the brand new awesome podcast. Going to be some good stuff there. The link will obviously be in the description. Check them out. Go give uh, go give DK Shy and Slap some love for their brand new excursion. It's always nervous, yeah. and it's nice to see such a great setup for a new channel when most YouTubers just kind of make a new channel. Yeah, been so, there, done that. Yes, sir. So great stuff to see. Congratulations, you two. And uh, Aww, we'll see you all next week. Don't know. Nope. Shut that's up. Too, that's, that's too wholesome a way to end. Okay, fine. Let's do, do the ooh-ah again. Ooh-ah!